What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Ben Jammin. I'm here with NFT Talk, the interview series, and I have my good friend here, Matt Caesar. Uh, Matt's a former baseball player, NFT artist, all around great guy. Super excited to have him on. Um, Matt, thank you for being here. It, it's a pleasure. And if you want to just introduce yourself, talk a little bit about you know your history and your background, a little elevator pitch, and you know we'll get into the details. Yeah, thanks, Ben, for having me. I'm uh... I'm stoked to be on the show. Uh, I mean, I've talked about baseball my whole life or football my whole life, and it's good to be talking about NFTs. Um, grew up in New Jersey, uh, went to Villanova, played football and baseball at Villanova. Um, was drafted in the fifth round by the Cubs in 2010. Uh, made it to the big leagues in 2014. Uh, won a World Series in 2016. Um, and just got released uh, about two months ago from the Cardinals, but have been floating around for different teams, Padres, uh, Diamondbacks, um, for the last you know ten years. And it's pretty much a blessing in disguise, man. I was able to to be here with my family, my mom, my dad, my twenty month old son. So it's uh, it's been really good. It's been uh, been a lot of fun. Been a great summer. Awesome, man. Is you know amazing to hear about you know that kind of path from you know being you know big man on campus kind of thing and now be entering this whole new world and it's almost like another freshman orientation right like entering this space and not knowing who's who and where to turn and what to look at where to go and so uh, it's really cool to all kind of be a part of this together and you know learning in this wild wild west that is nfts right now yeah, I mean, dude, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I felt like I was low man on the totem pole when I first got in. And, you know, the collectors, the whales, the people, they don't care if you're a baseball player or a football player or, you know, hockey, soccer. Mm -hmm. um, they're in it for the art and they want the story. Um, you know, so my first sales were, were happening. I was so stoked because I'm like, damn, this is low man on the totem pole. I'm building myself back up. And then once I started to get to, you know, 1200 uh, with my first big sale, um, dude, I was ecstatic. I, I remember like running around the, my living room because I was so happy. And then oh, they just awesome. continued to get larger because I, I, um, I figured out like how to tell my story. And by telling my story through art, I feel like it was very relatable to everybody. And then I just kept selling, kept selling and then wow. made more connections and, uh, you know, it's it's been really, really great lately, man. I've been having so much fun. The connections are, are out of this world. I uh, made some really great friends from people all over the world. Yeah, dude, it's it's amazing. And and I love the way you said is it. like when you come in, you, you're starting fresh and you have to build up your identity unless you're already a well-known artist that right. is in that kind of world already. Mm -hmm. Right. But like there's a lot of people finding their creative um, freedom right now in this space. And it's really cool to see what you've been doing. Um, I've been following along and I noticed some themes in your work that I want to talk about and, and we'll definitely get to that. But, um, you know, I use you in DraftKings for years um, in baseball. So this is <laughs> this is really such a, a, you know, a fun experience for me. Sick. And um, one of the things that, you know, we've talked about behind the scenes is both of our last names are pretty hard to pronounce. And for years, I would, you know, watch the games and try to listen to the announcers so I could find the, you know, the right way to pronounce your name. And every time it was always something different. Yeah, and so funny. I messaged you. I was like, Yo, you know, just let me know. How, how do I pronounce, you know, what are the, the phonics of it? You're just like, you know how to say Caesar? Say Caesar. And I was yeah. like, okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's funny. I did a piece about that when I was, when I was young, everybody used to make fun of my last name. They would be like, you know, Caesar salad, Caesar salad. And dude, they, they still make fun of my last name. Like, you know, I'll be in the outfield and, and people will be, you know, fans will be screaming at me, like just butchering my last name. <laughs> and my dad always told me when I was younger, he's like, you know, when somebody messes up your last name and, and says something about the pronunciation, just say it's Caesar, like the emperor. So I've always kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, that stuck with me just cause I, I felt like, you know, Caesar, the emperor was, was a baller. So I feel like my dad kind of instilled that that confidence in me as a kid to like, you know, not not be afraid of you know pronouncing your last name to people. So uh, so I've always always brought that with me, and I'm gonna teach my son that as well. Dude, I love that. That's that's you know such a mindset thing, and I'm I'm huge on mindset and 
law of attraction and what you think, you know, you attract to you. And when you think of it in a way that promotes empowerment as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, um, the opposite where you would be like kind of mm -hmm. bad about it. It's like right. you, you, you take it and you own it in a way that makes you even feel better than when you first started thinking about it. You're like, now, yeah. now I'm boss, I'm an emperor. Hell yeah. You know? Yeah. That I love that. And, um, and you, you so told me your son's a, you know, Matt jr. Yep. So you're passing down legacies, man. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm trying, man. Little, little MJ, Maddie, we call him. And I mean, he's a handful, man. He just, uh, he's almost two, he's 20 months old. So he's like in the stage where he's getting into everything, pulling, uh, pulling cabinets, touching the stove top. Like he's, he's just nonstop, man. But it's so much fun. You know, it's, uh, it's a blessing to have him and be chasing him around. You know, I'm, I'm very lucky. That's awesome, man. Well, you know, it's, it's great to have, you know, somebody healthy and growing up and, you know, you, you're able to put your passion behind that. And the way that you speak about it is definitely clear. Um, so yeah, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, not spend too much time on the baseball, but it's definitely been a big part of your life. And, um, you know, now you're coming into this, this industry where there is competition, but it's a lot of, you know, everybody trying to support and love each other. So it's, it's not exactly zero sum as, you know, a baseball game would be. So, you know, growing up in such a competitive environment and being around, you know, having to be the best at all times and always on your game you know what is it like transitioning into this kind of world where art is never perfect and it's never done and um you know you have to pour your emotion into it just as much as you would in a sport but you're not really competing you're more promoting so you know how is the transition from being you know alpha competitive to now having to almost be one among the crowd as opposed to on the field yeah i mean um it's a great question and and uh you know i think one of the reasons why i was successful as an athlete was because i didn't look at it like that i looked at it like i was competing with myself all the time mm. so i was always trying to control what i could control and i think that was the the biggest difference maker between me and other people because you know, a lot of other people were trying to catch up to, you know, so-and-so or they were trying to, they were worried about what so-and-so was doing. And at the end of the day, I, I was never really worried about, you know, what anybody else was doing. I was just worried about, you know, making myself better. And and I feel like the art world is a lot like that. You know, you, you look at the space, you look at Twitter all the time and it's, you know, obviously there's drama here and there, but at the end of the day, everybody is like helping everybody. And, you know, it's, uh, it's I feel like I'm not competing with anybody because I, I want everybody to be successful because the more successful these other artists are, the more successful I'm going to be. It's just kind of like, uh, you know, uh, um, rising tides lift all boats. Exactly. Exactly. And that's that's the best way to put it. And, um, you know, and, and that's how I was as a player. Um, you know, I wasn't competing with the other wide receivers on my team. I was just trying to be the best. And then people were that people would feed off of that. So they tried to be the best they could be too. And then we just, we just became a better team. You know, I remember we, you know, as a football player, I, I stayed there all year round, like four years in college, I was there all summer. And I feel like that's how my roommate was as well. And, you know, the first summer there was like 12 guys, my freshman year, the next summer there was like 30 guys, you know, the next summer the whole team was there and we ended up winning the national championship. Mm. So, so like, you know, we, we feed off each other and yeah, there's, there's competition within to make each other better. But at the end of the day, we are competing with ourselves. And I, and I think that's, that's the biggest thing that separates, you know, somebody from up here to, to down there, you know, obviously there's competition, but you know, if you look at making yourself better or just leveling up, you know, that's, that's the best way to, to kind of have a, an outlook on it. Dude, I love that so much. That's such like Mamba mentality, you know, like, and that's why, that's why you, you have a world series under your belt. Yeah. That's why you got where you are national championship. Like that's, it's crazy. And, and again, that's a mindset thing. And I love the way that you framed that as you're not competing against others. You're competing against yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I definitely, I definitely feel that a lot. That's kind of what I do. And that's why I'm so hard on myself because you know, I just want to always make myself better every day. So, um, you know, there's a relentless hunger and I feel like it's never enough. And in, in, in some ways it's unhealthy because like, you know, I, I drive myself so hard sure. because I want to be the best version of myself. 
And, you know, the, the way that you articulated that I think is, is incredible. And so, you know, it's the same with art, right? Like you start with, you know, a, a blank page and then you just try to become the best version of what you can do. And over time you get better and better and better. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, I love that Mamba mentality. That's amazing. Yeah. And um, I was, I was watching Kevin Hart talk and this, you know, Kevin Hart's comedian, you, you know, there's not too much serious shit that comes out of his mouth, but um, he was like, I don't know if he was giving a talk or like a speech at graduation or, or something. And he was just speaking or no, it was, uh, he was on a Joe Rogan podcast. That's, mm -hmm. that's what it was. I listened to Joe Rogan, you know, when I drive and he's like, you know, I'm trying to level up in the game of life. He's like, whatever that level is, like, you know, whether it's being a comedian, being an actor, being a father, being a husband, he's like, I'm, I'm trying to level up and get better every day. And when I heard that, I was like, wow, dude, like, you know, I got to stop trying to level up just as an athlete. I need to level up as a whole and just become a better person. And like you said, have those tides rise everybody. So the better I can be, the better my wife can be, the better my son can be, the better my family can be, you know? So I really took that to heart and that's, you know, dude, NFTs are, it's still, I feel like it's still early and I took a big chance by like being so deep into this, you know, mm -hmm. and, and by doing this, I got out of my comfort zone and, and like I said, you know, Twitter is a full-time job and I'm, and I, I try and interact with everybody, but that helped me, that helped me level up in that, that, that side of life, you know? So, um, it's just freaking cool, man. I'm, I'm stoked. Awesome. Yeah. Th that's a, a great way of thinking about it. So shout out Kevin Hart, shout out Matt Caesar, um, you know, leveling up. I definitely want to, I definitely want to internalize that a little bit with myself and, it, it's a it's a, a great way to summarize that mentality of working on yourself so easily that you just you need to level up and the only way to do that is by getting better at yourself mm -hmm. awesome man and and one of the ways that you've helped others while you know making yourself better is you're involved with a lot of charity work and you have the seize the day foundation yep um and so i would love to talk about that here let me let me pull that up here on screen and then we could talk about this. This is something that I love. I'm I'm really about you know giving back. It's what I've done my whole career and every aspect of what I've done. And so we have right here. This is the seize the day .com foundation. Um, Matt Caesar. So you could see he has a bunch of information here. Um, check out all the different links. But Matt, you want to just give us a little bit of a background about the foundation itself. Um, you know, what you do, how it was started. And then after that, um, we'll start the, our talk into NFTs for the second half. Yes. Uh, 2010, I was called to, uh, so, okay, let me, let me back up a second. In 2007, I joined the bone marrow registry and, um, the registry is uh, a couple cheek swabs. And by joining the registry, you have a, an opportunity to help save a life who is in need of bone marrow, a bone marrow transplant. So I joined the registry in 2007. At the time, it was a one in 80,000 chance. And, um, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I was just signing up because it was part of our, like, kind of our team thing to do. Mm -hmm. And just kind of went along, went went about my business. And then in 2010, I got called to donate. And, uh, you know, I was I was so, so happy because I'm like, all right, you know, let's, let's get this rolling and help save this girl's life. And and at the end of the day, like there was no doubt in my mind that I was going to help save this little girl. So in 2010, I donated bone marrow to a little girl from the Ukraine. Um, her name's Anastasia. She's 12 years old now, which is like amazing. Family's great. They have a, another son. Uh, yeah, that's a, the that's a video right there. Um, so I, I kind of took it upon myself to, after that was done, to raise awareness and and continue to kind of help save lives um, by inspiring others to join the registry. And, you know, by doing that, I, I know for a fact that there's 10 plus people that have watched the video that I inspired that saved lives. So I, I kind of took it upon myself to, to really like push that, push the envelope. And, you know, that's, that's exactly why I paint my skeletons. You know, I, I paint the skeleton to, 
to raise awareness to, sh to, so when people ask like, Hey, why do you paint the skeleton? I can tell them about this story. You know, I donated bone marrow. So I, I like to like people to ask, Hey, why are you painting a skeleton? So that I can tell them about mm. this story, you know? So it's, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's freaking awesome, man. I, I keep in touch with the family. Like I said, uh, probably once every two, three months, it's, there's a little language barrier because obviously they're from the Ukraine. Right. Um, but yeah, dude, that's, so that's, that's what my foundation does. We, we raise awareness, we raise money for, for kids locally, um, that need food, that need presents like during Christmas time, Thanksgiving families with Thanksgiving. Um, you know, we, we do that every year. Um, we just try and give back as much as possible. You know, we're, we're a small foundation, but we get the job done locally for sure. Awesome, man. Well, I would love to contribute to that. That sounds amazing. Um, you know, the, the story in general and, you know, watching this video is, it, I, I really want people to go watch it. I watched it earlier. Um, but I would really love people to really go check it out, watch the whole story. And that's just really amazing, man. So, um, seize the day.com and seize is spelled S Z C Z the day dot com we have it right here and um so let's see so you can donate right here paypal so so matt i mean the question here is like why can't i donate e bro you got it you got it you got to help me out here yeah, I, don't, I don't even know what paypal is anymore that's way above my my pay grade bro <laughs> I, I just know how to accept it and send it to coinbase <laughs> awesome man well let's let's work on that so we can get some some nft people in there for yeah, you dude, no doubt for sure Awesome. I, guess, I guess I could. I guess I could create a wallet, right? That would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's let's try and work that out for you and get um, you know, get some Bitcoin or Ethereum donations going on there. And I, I right. think, uh, yeah, yeah, just let it ride for sure. That'd be great. Yeah, that'll that'll be great. So here here's sponsors. You can become a sponsor on here. There's an application. So you know, I, I would love if people go check that out. Um, if you want to get involved, be the match dot org is where you did the the donations yep. super easy like it says join the register right at the top there you can see it awesome yep right there so all right great job so let's um let's just real quick i'm gonna pull that off um so when it comes to when it comes to donating itself um have you thought about you know what kind of maybe artwork or nft stuff you could do when it comes to maybe auctioning um pieces for charity and stuff like that so it's not um you know donate money but it's it's about like someone getting you know something out of it and maybe attaching some kind of utility to the nft like you know some maybe like a hospital visit or one of the cameos or something like that just something a little extra um you know that can maybe be unlocked content or something, but that's definitely something we could talk about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've done paintings and prints for charities um, and for my charity as well and raised a bunch of money for it. Like this Cubs print, there's a percentage that goes to my foundation from every, every sale on that. So you nice. know, there's, there's ways that, that I, that I make money and I tie that, that foundation aspect into, you know, my art. I love that. I love that so much. And so I'm glad you brought that up. I'm going to show this, um, this video here or not the video, the screen of your, your painting that you made. So this is, um, one of the very first things I ever saw when I searched your name and art, um, was, you know, stories about how you created this, um, world series 2016 mound celebration. Um, and there's a story behind it too. Uh, so I would love to, you know, for you to talk about the story and, you know, the drought and what it meant to you and the organization. And you, you made this specifically for the owner, um, yeah. too, I believe. Correct. Right. So, yeah. yeah, if you want to talk about that story a little bit, that'd be great. Yeah. So so the, the, the reason why I started creating art again and started creating like stencil paintings was because, you know, I, I did it all throughout high school and grade school and college. I, I always painted. Um, never in a million years did I think it was going to turn into a profession or, you know, a secondary profession or whatever. Um, so when we had our foundation event in 2016, um, I painted two self portraits and the one self portrait was me in a Villanova football uniform. And the other one was me in a Cubs uniform. 
and um, we held a dinner. Both of those sold for five hundred dollars each, and I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." You know, that was a a pretty fun way to make some money. Um, donated towards charity, um, and then that year we won the World Series, and the Cubs uh, like charities reached out to me and said, "Hey, would you do a painting of the Cubs World Series?" And I, and I was at, sp at spring training at the time. I'm like, geez, man, you guys are putting a freaking large boat on me right here. So I was able to, and then you can see it right there, the third one in up. If you go up, yeah, I wanted to maximize it here. No, no, go back, go back. Oh, okay. So, yeah, up. If you go up, you see the picture. Yeah, that one right there. Oh, so that, nice. So that was the one I did for the Cubs charity, and that raised forty thousand dollars. And the owner was the one that got outbid. So, oh. so he was like, "Hey, would you do a, a painting for me? Another World Series painting for me um, that I could hang up in my suite?" So that is when I came up with the the mound one. Wow! And, you know, I, and they allowed me to you know sell it for charity and and make some profit on it and. Um, you know, it's, it's been great, man. It's, it's, I, I get pictures from people all the time that are in the, 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 the owner suite and they'll be like, Hey, we saw your painting. Like, you know, which is cool because it's still hanging up, man. And it's just, it's, it's, it's really sick that how, how that eventually came and evolved. Like, so I started doing paintings after that. I was like, wow, if I can sell a painting at a charity for 40 K, like I can, I can keep doing this and right. keep having fun and, and it was it was very therapeutic for me, like helped me like take my mind off baseball. Um, so at the end of the day, it was it was so much fun doing it. And, you know, I get home and doodle a little bit or wake up and draw a little bit, sketch. And, um, you know, I pretty much taught myself how to do it. That's awesome, man. I love it. Um, and I love how I can tell, you know, who the players are. Yeah. Really cool. Um, and you had them all sign here. You could see the different signatures, so that's amazing. And you know, you know, you've memorialized yourself in more more ways than just being a part of the championship team. You know, your your artwork is hanging up in the actual stadium, which is so cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Now thinking about it like that, yeah, man, that that's that's great. And so, you know, to piggyback off that, I want to talk a little bit about um, your recent NFT collection that you just put out. Um, you know, I want to I want to get into a little bit of the story about like how you discovered NFTs first. You know, before we lead into that, but I definitely want to talk about the the life collection. So um, before we get there, how long have you been creating art? Is, you know, have you did you start painting early on? Is it something you took on later in life? Um, you know, what is the story and the history behind you and the painting? And is this always your style and stuff? Like, what's the history there? Um, I, I started painting like as a, as a kid and drawing as a kid. Um, my dad was, is very creative and he would always like, you know, go to work, come, come back home, like eat dinner. And then afterwards to relax, he would grab a sketchbook and just start drawing right on the couch. And I, I still like, remember like it was yesterday. I was always, he would sit on his recliner and I would always just kind of like sit on the left side of his, the armchair and just kind of watch him doodle, watch him draw. He made, um, if you're familiar with fishing at all, he made bucktails. Um, he carved, like, you know, he did everything, man. And, and I was just there for the ride and you know, I, I enjoyed watching him do it. And, and, and then slowly, but surely he would begin to teach me how to carve, how to, how to sketch, how to, um, like how to blend. And I just, I just started taking like art classes in, you know, grade school and uh, junior high and high school and, and college. And, and I was, you know, I was obviously, I love doing it. Um, like I said, I never thought it would be a profession. Um, but that, so that foundation is really what kickstarted it. My foundation painting, you know, it was just like, all right, Hey, how can I raise some money? And that was that. And then it just kind of escalated with the Cubs. And then from the Cubs charity painting, I just, had more requests and more commissions and then I just kind of continued to paint. And then I, I kind of, I stumbled in the NFTs. I got really lucky. Somebody uh, tweeted at myself and, and Micah Johnson and was like, Hey, you know, I'd really love to see you guys do a collab. So Micah reached out to me and, and we did a George Floyd collab and it was like perfect time. Um, white baseball player, black baseball player, uh, two artists uh, merging together to paint, you know, 
something that was was you know a pretty big in, in history and and society at the time and and we were just trying to raise awareness you know two guys collaborating and working together um so i did a half of half of his face and mikey did the other half and he's like hey man let's let's do um nfts too and i was like well, what's an nft <laughs> And so he explained it to me and, you know, I'm as a baseball player, you know, who's made some money, like, you know, I'm, I'm always very skeptical of, of people and, you know, what they try and get me to do. And, and I knew Micah was the same way, you know, he's, he's played in the big leagues, he's made some money. So if he was, if he was kind of like pushing me to do this, then I, then I was like, I was trusting him. Right. You know, I, I barely knew him, but I trusted him because, you know, we, we kind of walked in the same shoes for, for a couple of years. And um, so I was like, yeah, let's do it, man. And, and we were like one of the first drops on Nifty Gateway. Uh, I think we were like week six. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, so we sold out. I, I can't remember the, the number. I think it was either, you know, 80 at 200 or 200 at 80. And I, I, the funny thing is I, I forgot when the drop was. So he texted me and was like, yo, bro, we sold out in six minutes. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, we sold out NFTs. And I remember looking at my wife and, I, you know, I tell the story all the time. I'm like, yo, we, we just sold out our NFT collection. And she's like, what the hell is an NFT? And I was like, I'm not really sure what it is. <laughs> so um, so that, that was sick. And we ended up selling. So we sold that out and we sold um, the physical painting for 10K to Jason Hayward, a teammate of mine. Um, which was which was really sick, and we donated all the proceeds to um, you know fight racial injustice and and to support that, and, um, and it was really cool. It was an, it was an awesome thing. And Tommy Wilson, who he, he is also a baseball player, he was the one who animated. Um, there's like a saying, like you know, I want to I want dream about being a Supreme Court justice or or something like that, and he was the one that animated the saying so i kind of reached out to him and was like yo man like appreciate you animating the uh the george floyd piece you know like are you into nfts and he was like yeah i'm, I'm on super rare you should get on it and um i was like all right well, like what is it he's like let me just put you in contact with zach and he put me in contact with zach and i shuffled my feet a little bit dude i had a real hard time i'm not very tech uh right. oriented and I had a real hard time like creating a MetaMask um, and getting that like dialed in. And I remember I tried it for like an hour one day and I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, you know, forget this, man. I'm, I'm not even doing this. <laughs> and um, a week later, for whatever reason, I was like, you know what? Let me just do this and, you know, figure it out and see where, where it goes. I just got to set some time aside and just grind on this and just watch some YouTube channels or videos and, and figure this out. So I finally figured it out. And like two days later, I was introduced to, to FIWO and I saw FIWO stuff and I was like, wow, this, this is like the most amazing thing ever. Um, you know, this, this guy's just like telling a story and people love it. He's just sharing his story mm -hmm. and, you know, I could relate to it because, you know, I'm just like, wow, I have a great story to share. And this guy is inspiring a bunch of people inspiring me to tell my story and you know i i think that the people out there should know my story should so they could give somebody another chance at, at life and that's when i start painting the skeleton man i just start painting the skeleton trying to raise awareness as well as like painting it in relatable circumstances like my first one i sold to sir nigel um it's called under pressure and it's just like how I, how I felt as an athlete. It's, it's way down there. It's probably like, uh, maybe like my seventh or eighth one. Oh, oh, I didn't even see the view all here. Okay. Nice. Yeah. If you go down, if you go down further, a little bit further, it's like my first skeleton painting, uh, it's, uh, right there under pressure. Under pressure. Got it. So this was like my first one when I was like, all right, I need to tell my story. And like, this is how I felt as an athlete. Like we're under pressure. We're under pressure to make money. We're under pressure to be a star. You know, we're under pressure because we want to be loved, you know, like under pressure because, you know, of baseball, just, you know, as, as people, like we're just under pressure all the time right. as an athlete we are. And I put the diamonds under the, the word pressures to, you know, 
if you can get through pressure, you know, you, you turn out to be a diamond because that's how diamonds are made. And uh, I put this up and I was so nervous about putting this up because I'm like, dude, this isn't me. Like, I feel so vulnerable right now by sharing something like this. Right. It's just not me. Like, as an athlete, like, you know, I'm supposed to be like a tough ass, a hard ass and, and not supposed to, sh to share the side. But like I said, I was inspired by Fiwo to tell my story. And this this is a part of my story. The skeletons there as well as, you know, how you know, we feel as athletes to, to perform, you know? So I, I put that up and I, like I said, I was nervous and then I got a bid by Sir Nigel for 1200 bucks. And I was like, I wanted to cry because it, it wasn't the, it wasn't about the money. It was right. about like somebody supporting like how I felt, you know, like somebody that could possibly relate to how I felt. And I know that athletes feel like that. So it was just, it was, it was really cool to think like wow this guy is supporting me and he understands he understands this painting you know and it was it was just one right. of the coolest things i've ever experienced you know like i've i've won a ton of stuff been all american been been named like you know players of of the year all this and that but you know selling this painting for you know a, a decent amount of money but it wasn't about the money it was about the the support that this guy was showing right so it was, it was like, you know, I started to be like emotional on it, but it was, it was like one of the coolest things that, that has ever happened to me. And then from there, I'm like, wow, this, this is what, is what sells. Like right. people want to be relatable and, I love it. and this is something that like people can relate to being an athlete by being on the business side as well. You know, like, like I said before about like, you know, leveling up and being the best version of myself you can relate to that even though you're not a professional baseball player right so so that is what fiwo inspired me to do is to share my story and, and have people be have people relate to my story that's awesome man um one of the questions i was going to ask you is like what does art mean to you and i feel like you already just explained it and you you know you, you sold your emotion that's the way that you put it is like you sold the way that you were feeling and it's not even that you sold. It's like someone bought the way that you were feeling, right? Yeah. And so because it it you know resonated with them and made them understand, or maybe they already understood, and that they wanted to kind of emphasize that feeling. And you know, it's it's always interesting to try and speculate like what the creator feels as well as what the collector feels, because they yeah. could be very very different things. You know, like your pressure could be someone else's pressure, but maybe they're in finance and it's a exactly. different kind of pressure, you know, and I love that. And this is, you know, and never apologize for being emotional about something that has to do with emotion. Yeah. Right. You know, like that's, that's what this is all about. And I was never really into art before NFTs, you know, candidly, it's just something that was never me. I, I wasn't a collector. I just, I never drew or painted. So it, that, that world never, you know, resonated with me as much. And then once I started listening in on like clubhouse talks um, with like, uh, when I first started getting into, into NFTs at uh, clubhouse was just starting out, it was really big. And I was just listening to all these artists speak about what they were making. And on clubhouse, you can't see anything. So it's all just like audio. It's like Twitter spaces. Right. Um, so you can't see anything. So all you're doing is hearing people talking about the passion about creating and then the other people, the passion about the collecting. And so that kind of without actually seeing any of the work made me understand the emotion that goes into it and the passion that goes into it, because it's not just like, hey, I made a sketch today, but it's like I poured my heart onto this canvas. Yep. And that's something I never understood. And so now that like I'm starting to really get that more as we go through and we see these ebbs and flows in the nft industry and like there's a big difference between you know one of one art and ten thousand generative animals as profile pictures and so you know um i i would love to ask you like how do you feel about um the way that this industry is right now where most of the hype and focus is on these big generative projects as opposed to you know this like heart on your sleeve type one of one art yeah i mean it doesn't bother me um you know because i i 
it, just look at the real real world. You know, people gamble every day. You know, whether it's on sports or whether it's at the casinos. So yeah. so the generative pieces that's that's fun for people. You know, they don't they don't look at it like you know emotion. They they're having fun collecting and flipping and 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 that is fun. You know, people enjoy yeah. doing that. So there's two aspects. Like you can you can go for that um, and have you know, pretty much a person that has no idea and doesn't care about art or the artist that's just in it to, to flip it. Or you have the the collector that enjoys doing both or just, just one of one art. And, and there's a lot of people like that. You know, a lot of people want to invest in people. And right. I think, you know, one of the coolest things someone ever said to me was, Hey, you know, I want one of your one of ones because I want to invest in you. And I was like, wow, dude, like, you know, that is, that's pretty that's pretty much the sickest thing i've ever heard you know coming from a collector you know because because that like pumped me up and it, it makes it makes artists want to be better they're like wow these people are investing in me it doesn't matter what the price is like these people want me to succeed and i want them to succeed too you know and that's if you look at all my one-on-ones on super rare like i always try and stay around the floor price because i want their investment to to be a good investment, you know, right. a lot of the people that that bought my stuff could could potentially flip, you know, for U.S. dollar more right. than they bought for, you know, with the the highs and low of ETH, it's it's a little difficult. But dude, you know, this I, piece I, is I, awesome. What's that? I love this piece so yeah. much. This is so real, man. Like the I was because I was just reading reading this here. Yep. Um, curtain call. One of the coolest moments of my career was my curtain call after I hit a grand slam in the eighth inning. Words can't describe the feeling as I stood at the top of the steps and witnessed the roaring cheers of the crowd. I felt like I was in a movie. All of the hard work I put in from day one was rewarded at that very moment. In this piece, the faces in the crowd are the heroes that inspired me throughout my life, from family members by blood and by bone marrow to powerful figures and sports legends. These are the people that played a role in helping me achieve my dreams. And then you have your your curtain call there, man. Like that's so deep yeah. and so emotional. And it's more than just like an, an athlete. It's like, that's your emotion there. Yeah. Like you're, you're, you're portraying like what, what that meant to you and the people who inspired you. And you, I could see that, you know, there's Jordan and Kobe and Rocky. And like, I could see in the background, like what I'm looking at is it's just really cool. And I love that you're, you're tying in your, your real experiences into your art and there's people there that want to collect that and like you said you'll be a part of what you're you're doing not just what you're making well yeah and and people can relate to their own their own curtain call and you know that's that's why i put you know superman and black panther and picasso and babe ruth and muhammad ali in there jackie robinson because yeah you know they they don't just inspire me they inspired millions and millions of people and and I'm sure that a lot of people can say, wow, like that Muhammad Ali inspired me or, you know, Rocky inspired me to keep pushing like I the tiger. Like, you know, there's there's things that that I, the, the reason I put them in there. Yeah, they inspired me. Like, you know, I, I have people in there, you know, he he inspired me like, you know, is to to paint every day. Like I try and paint every day and I try nice. and like try and work out every day. You know, those are things that, you know are relatable to people. And that that's why, you know, I was like, you know, how can I, how can I make this curtain call relatable? And, you know, I just putting random faces in the, in the crowd wasn't, wasn't fun, you know? So, you know, I wanted to, to be relatable in the sense that those people inspired more than just me, you know, Martin Luther King, I have in there, Andy Warhol, Leroy Neiman, uh, Dolly's in there. My wife and son, my mom and dad are in there. Superman. Like there's, you know, it's, it's, is that the the um, yeah it's the a little girl, girl that, yep that I don't wow know. Yep. wow that's amazing i thought so and i was looking and then once you said wife and son i looked and i was like oh wow that's her right there yep. oh man that's that's amazing that's so deep i love i love this i i just want to keep looking through your stuff there's because it's it's like i love the style but it's more than just that like you're there's emotion you you told me there's a reason behind the skull is that you know in, in the pre-show, I, I want I told you I wanted to ask you about that. And I didn't realize that it wasn't just, hey, I like skulls. You know, I grew up wearing Ed Hardy or something like that. It was like, <laughs> you know, there's a real meaning behind it. So, no, that, that's amazing, man. I love that. 
Yeah, um, the the art that you put in it's so unique and so you that like I I, lo I love that you make yourself in this and you put yourself and like when you have when you have a piece like I can tell that you've had emotion in there and you keep talking about emotion and and passion and I love that so um, I, I do want to transition a little bit into like where where you see this NFT market. And, you know, we've talked about some one of ones and profile pictures and stuff, but, you know, I have your crypto punk at, at the top right here. And so I want to I want to know, like, you know, how you've seen crypto punk or like this this whole uh, movement, I guess, of, of people buying in and seeing this as their social identity and not just, you know, hey, I changed my picture of a new haircut today, but. I'm involved in this movement in this digital rev revolution. So, you know, give me a little history of, of your punk and like how, how you acquired it and you know, how you see this, you know, this whole craziness that we're involved in. Yeah. So when, when punks were just like, this is probably about a month ago, um, punks were just like going crazy. And I just sent out a tweet. I was like, man, I need a punk. That's all I said. And it, it must have went viral because everybody was like commenting, retweeting, you know, liking. And Jason Williams, um, his his handles going parabolic. He's you know uh, really big into Bitcoin. Um, really, really great dude. Um, started Fast Med Urgent Care. He's super smart. Oh wow. Um, he's like, yo, I got you. And I was like, what? I'm not what do you mean you got me? And he messaged me, DM'd me and was like, Hey man, like I'm just getting finished surfing. Like I'll give me your ETH address and I'll, I'll send it over to you. And I was like, oh, man, this, this guy's legit. So this, this could be happening right now. Right. And like 20 minutes later, punk shows up in my open sea address. And I was like, Holy shit. Man. Oh man. This dude just, just freaking gifted me a uh, pretty much, you know, life changing asset. And, uh, he's like, just pay it forward, man. Find a way to pay it forward. Um, and I was like, dude, I got you. And I sent him my video, the E60 video. And he's like, man, I had no idea who you were. Um, and I, I'm, I don't care if he knew who, my, who I was or not. He was like, but I'm so glad that, you know, I found this and saw that I gave this punk to you because the, you're the, the right person to have it. And, you know, obviously I'm super grateful for it um, and I'm going to hold it as long as I can um, and pay it forward when I can pay it forward. You know, I try and pay it forward every day. So I feel like in that aspect, uh, I'm, I'm doing it, doing him right for sure. That's awesome, man. And what a story. You know, I, yeah. I, I've heard of people being gifted, you know, digi rocks or something like that or, you know, neighbors and um, cheaper things. But to get a crypto punk, that's. That's quite an, a nice little um, relationship wow. that you guys have started there. Yep, yeah, and you know we talk a lot, man. We talk, you know, once a week, and um, he's just a great, a great dude, man. I hopped on his podcast, and uh, I mean, it was awesome. Nice. And you want to talk about the um, the visor that you have on there? Why why you've dressed up your punk? Yeah. So so he always wears pit visor or pit vipers. They're called. They're, you know, they're that style of sunglasses, and um, you know there was. I guess kind of like a, a thing going around with him doing it. And I was like, dude, let me, uh, let me get those Vipers on my, on my profile pic. So he sent me over and, and I, I think it makes it look cooler. I, I kind of wish that the punks had those pit Vipers on them. Yeah. I saw it. I was like, wait, is that a punk or is that a derivative? Cause it looks, it looks like a punk. Yeah. And then I, see, <laughs> I see the glasses too. No, that's dope. But yeah, I was, I was like that the pixels have really cleared up on my screen. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about, you just released um, an NFT collection and it's called Life. And I'm going to share it here. Um, you know, this is this is your your skull theme and very minimalistic compared to a lot of the other work that you did. Um, so I want I want to hear, you know, where this this collection came from, you know, why you decided to do it. Uh, I'm going to read this right here. And then if you want to um, talk a little bit about it. So what you wrote in the description, this collection depicts the many emotions of life, whether we're happy or sad, 
Emotions and their consequences are things that we as humans can't fully escape. The images in this collection depict personal emotions that I've experienced throughout my life and my sports career. Uh, so would you like to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, um, I, you know, I can go down the list real quick, uh, push the envelope. You know, that's that's exactly what I, I want to do with my life. Like we talked about leveling up. Um, so I try to push the envelope on everything I do. Um, embrace the target. Uh, I think that's very relatable to the NFT space. Um, that was kind of our motto in 2016 um, with the Cubs. Uh, we had a really good year in 15, and we knew that we kind of had a target on us. So 16, we we came up with embrace the target. We know that everybody's going to be coming after us, and we have to embrace that. Mm-hmm. And we ended up winning the World Series, which is super cool. And, and I think, like, you know, in the NFT space, um, we embrace that target, you know, people are always thinking it's a scam or, you know, it's a fad, it's just going to go downhill, you know, and I feel like the community really embraces the target and, and, you know, puts their foot down and say, no, we're like, we're, we're here to stay. And, and I, I truly believe that, um, focus on yourself, pretty explanatory. Um, you know, I feel like we get caught up in a lot of shit and, you know, pretty much what I was telling you earlier, you know, people are worried about what other people are doing. And sometimes we just need to focus on ourselves. Um, life pull me in different directions. I mean, how many times do we go through life where, where we're, you know, we don't know what to do, whether, you know, for me, it's like, you know, baseball is pulling me, art's pulling me, family's pulling me. So like, for me, it just like, feels like I'm getting pulled in a bunch of different directions. And, you know, at, at some point you just got to go with the flow on one of them. Uh, mood swing is probably my favorite one. I think that's a pretty cool picture. Right. I like. I, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Uh, just you know, obviously self-explanatory. Uh, we're always going through shit. Um, for me personally, it's you know when you in a game, you know you there's you fail so much in a game. There's so many ups and downs in baseball. So you know you you have mood swings throughout the game. You could be you know, over three and you're, you're just miserable playing in the outfield. And then you get that hit to save your day. You're one for four. You're like, damn, like I, I feel great right now. I, I got out of here with a hit. <laughs> that's, um, such, that's such a unique aspect of baseball, right? Like you hit yeah. 300 and you're in the hall of fame and yeah. like you fail way more than you succeed. It's a very, very difficult mindset to, you know, to overcome. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, thinking outside the box. I feel like that's, that's how everybody in this space is, you know, we all think outside the box because we're in this space and this community and we, we are, you know, so deep into this and, and we vibe so much together that like, we're all outside the box, Mm. uh, heads in the cloud, dude. Like I can't tell you how much, you know, people are talking to me and I'm just thinking about like what I'm going to paint. So that's, I love that. That's like really how I I feel all the time, man. Like, you know, if, if I'm sitting at the beach and, you know, someone's talking to me and I'm just like, man, like what, what can I paint next? Like, what can I do? Like, how am I thinking? And it's not like a bad thing. Like, I don't, I feel like people kind of, kind of perceive that like, Oh, that guy's got his head in the clouds. Like, no, my head's in the clouds. I'm thinking about like business and, and like raising awareness and like doing shit with a purpose. Um, the next one's found my treasure. Um, I don't know if you ever read the alchemist. Oh yeah. One, it's one of my favorite books, Pablo Coelho. Yep. So Santiago oh. goes his whole life trying to, trying to find his treasure and he finds it. It's, it's at, at home where his family is. So yep. that's like how I, how I depicted that, like, you know, I searched my whole life playing baseball or football or going to college, like being an athlete, you know, trying to search for something and, you know, you find out that it's at home, you know, where, where your heart is with your family, mm. uh, which is very relatable. You know, people try and search their whole life, trying to figure out what they want to do and trying to get the grass isn't always green on the other side. So I feel like that's, is a very relatable thing too. Absolutely. Uh, get my life back together. I feel like right now being released, I'm just trying to figure it out and I'm just trying to put that shit back together. <laughs> um, being the present, I'm, I'm huge about that. Um, not thinking about the past and not thinking about the future and just kind of living the day as it is and, and just grinding it out and enjoying it. Same thing goes for, you know, stop and smell the roses. I feel like, you know, as, as artists, as business people, you know, 
we're always like on the go and sometimes we have to just stop and kind of enjoy enjoy life and that's you know that's pretty much friggin how i feel a lot that i need to just stop and just take a deep breath and breathe in fresh air uh searching for my purpose um i feel like that's a lot of us man like you know we're just trying to figure out what we're gonna do next Mm. you know that's that's kind of how i feel you know if i'm gonna go back and play baseball or if i'm gonna be an artist full time like you know how i'm gonna raise awareness how i'm gonna you know find help people to save other lives like i'm just i'm just trying to find my purpose and and i feel like you know that's that's something we all always kind of look for um and we're gonna be searching for a long time i feel like <laughs> dude i i love it this is such a cool collection i love how you have this character who's do you have a name for him by the way yeah i call him bones bones all right <laughs> i love how you have bones representing all these different feelings that you have and like you can see there's like personality in him even though there's no smile there's no eyes but yeah. like like with the heart like you can tell like you you portrayed the way that is longing towards it i love this the uh, be present one with the box around it like th this is just this is so amazing man um i could really see you know a comic book series or an animated series coming out of it using bones as the character so I would definitely, I would definitely put some focus on that. Maybe we can connect you with some animators in the, in the, um, the industry. Yeah, um, also deadheads, I think would be a, a pretty symbiotic relationship there. If, if you know about the deadheads project. No, I don't know. Oh, no, no. All right, sure. not to get too off track, but I'll just show you real quick. Cause it looks like bones. Oh, sick. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah, no, you know what? Somebody actually is, is like, presenting me to make bones into a generative generative character nice well i mean there's there's definitely a lot of of stuff that can be done with this character and i definitely would love to talk to you more about that this is amazing man you know matt thank you so much for coming on with us it's been you know great going through your history your you know status in sports your um passion and emotion for creating art as well as collecting it and what it means to you this has been such a great interview i, I really appreciate your time and, and coming on here and uh you know is there anything you'd like to say before we close out no man thanks for having me and and thanks for kind of allowing me to share my story um you know i love doing things like this because one it gets me out of my comfort zone and two you know like the more eyes that we can get on that character and the more you know ears we can get on the story is is what i'm here for man like that's that's my purpose i'm i'm searching for it but i know at the end of the day my purpose is to kind of to push that message and and help save lives awesome bro well i truly appreciate it let me throw your your website back up on here so twitter at super c's four we have matt caesar art.com seize the day.com um i pre please you know show my boy some love here on twitter um look at his collections look at his art donate to the foundation um you know we we want to get as many eyes on this industry as possible matt's a great representation of a mindset a focus and a clarity that i think is really appreciated here so matt it's been a pleasure brother can't wait to talk to you again and uh thank you for coming on yeah thanks for having me <laughs>